Hello, my name is Ravel Gaither and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today on my channel, I'm gonna be bringing you guys along on a process of me making these humongous tote bags. And I've been wanting to make a big tote bag for quite some time now. And I love the way that these bags came out. So I'm gonna go ahead and show them and talk about it. So let's do that. So in this video, I make two tote bags and I'm gonna show them at two different times because they're so freaking big. But this is one of the bags that I make in this video. It is a medium blue denim. I hope this is focusing, but I did this really cool curve design on here and it has the corner protectors with rivets on here as well I did a curved bottom on the road handles and it looks so freaking cool so this is the medium blue one and then I also did a dark blue denim one so this one is a dark blue denim has yellow contrast stitching I hope it's focusing I really can't see right now it has the same road handle design corner protectors and this bag was actually made out of denim that Joanne sent to me for free I kind of talk about that a little bit early on in the video but these are the bags that I make in this video they came out so dope and they're freaking huge so if you do want to stick around and watch me make these bags please do make sure you give this video a big thumbs up leave a comment down below let me know what you think and let's get into the video all right, so it is Monday, September 11th. It's currently 7.24 p.m. And I am super excited to be starting this project that I'm about to start production on. I really love this design so much. And I've been wanting to do like a really big toe bag for a long, not for a long, long time, but for a while I've been kind of pondering on like, oh my gosh, I really want to do like a huge toe bag, which I've done one in the past, but not in this style. And I've kind of been seeing, I don't know if it's a trend or not, but like people walking around with just really big tote bags. And I've been seeing it like on my Explore page, on Instagram and stuff like that. And I'm like, hmm. I don't want to do that. I don't know if the bag that I designed is kind of like the ones I've been seeing, but it's kind of has the same aspect and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and show the sketch that I did and let y'all see kind of what the vibe is. So let's get into it. All right. So this is one of the first ones. And I feel like the sketches on this one, this is one of the designs where I feel like I didn't capture the design really good in the sketch. I really hope it's focusing. Please. <gasps> Is it? It should be. I feel like I didn't capture the design really well in the sketch. Even though the sketch looks really good, the test piece that I did looks way better than this drawing. But I did the medium blue one, and I'm also going to do a dark blue one. Same design, just dark blue. And for the dark blue one, I'm actually using this denim that I got sent from Joann's, which I don't think I ever even talked about that on my channel. So let's talk about that. So like about a month and a half ago, I got a DM from Joann's, the craft store, which was crazy. And I was like, what? Ariana what are you doing here like what are you doing in my DMs so I opened it and they're like oh we're doing this collaboration with Lucky Brands which I have personally never heard of Lucky Brands but it's like this really big denim apparel brand that, or not apparel I don't know but it's like jeans people buy Lucky Brand jeans and it's like a really big thing but I had no idea what it was it was like oh can we send you some samples of our denim I was like yes like of course so this is one of the denims that they sent me and I love it so much the other two I don't really I don't know if I really would use them in bags it's more so like for apparel but this is one of the denims that they sent me and this is the one that I'm using it's this really nice 12 ounce indigo 100% cotton denim and the quality is really good and I've been meaning to use it so I'm gonna use it today and it's so crazy because when I first started my business I used to get my denim from Joanne so the fact that they reached out to me to send me denim for free is it, it, it's mind-blowing and I cannot believe that I just said those words right now I still don't even think I've actually processed that and it's been like a while ago but this is the denim that I'm using for this one and the other one I'm using from this brand that I get my denim from in New York so I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of what I've done so far and all the preparation and things that I have so let's do that all right so this is all that I've done so far I've done all my preps so I have my corner pieces so the corners are going to have these little overlaying pieces that I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do like a really nice um, riveting design along here. It's gonna be kind of like, um, what do you call those? They're like the metal corners on bags. They're corner protectors, um, and but they're normally metal, but I didn't want to do that. I really wanted to do like a denim one and I'm gonna add rivets to give it like that metal screwed in look. Um, and then I have just, you know, just all my pieces, all my embroidery done. So this is the medium blue and I have all my pieces for the dark blue as well. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is um, I have a template that I made. Of course, if you know me, you know I love templates and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my template, lay it across my pieces and then dot my lines where all of my overlaying pieces need to line up and stuff. And I'm gonna try something new um, for this project. I'm gonna use this thing called liquid stitch to kind of, I'm gonna use basing tape and liquid stitch at the same time to kind of get the bigger parts of this to stay flat because I notice when I do overlaying pieces, if um, I don't have anything on the full entire back of 
um, if I don't have like a full thing on the back of it to stick it down to the fabric sometimes it can like pucker and like bubble and look really weird because it's not actually connected to the fabric except for the stitch on the outside that's connecting it so I've been hearing a lot of designers and people who sew say liquid stitch is really good for things like this so I kind of already tested it for some other things and it works really well so I'm gonna go ahead and use that and I hope that it works really good for what I'm gonna use it for but yeah so I'm gonna go ahead um, do the templating and then sew on the corners I'm going to do the top and the little curve pieces and for each overlaying stitch I'm going I mean each all the top stitching on the overlaying pieces I'm gonna top stitch on it two or three times to give it a really thick stitch look and I did that on my last um, video that I did for the other design so I'm gonna do that for this one because I love that look so that might become like my thing I just think it looks really cool so I'm about to do that and that's what you're gonna see so let's do that actually never mind I just realized I never showed the test piece of this design which I freaking love and this is uninterfaced them so please ignore the floppiness of it the real one's gonna have a lot more shape and look a little bit um, bigger due to the shape but as you can see this is essentially what's gonna look like I did these rolled handles but this one I did like a box curved on them I've never done this before I thought it would be such a cool look and it really adds to the design and then as you can see this is what I was talking about with the overlaying pieces and the rivets for the bottom and it goes um, kind of all the way to the bottom so it's gonna look really cool and the curved design on the front so this is what the test piece looks like and i freaking love it but yeah so now i'm gonna start um getting into the project i just have to show the test piece first Alright, so I wanted to do a more closer up look of what I have to do when I said that I'm going to stitch over the stitching twice. So what I do is I go around it once and I like that look, but if I wanted to have like a thicker stitch look, I want the um, thread to look like it's more contrasting against the denim. I go over it a second time, but each time I go over it, I have to make sure I'm hitting the needle in the exact spot that it hit the first time so that it all looks like the same stitch kind of in a sense. So I just kind of do one stitch at a time and I left my foot up to make sure the needle's going down um, where the stitch ends and I just go all the way around and do the same thing for all the other stitches. Sometimes I don't have to lift my foot up. I can kind of see through the hole on the top of the foot that it's lining, but I just do one stitch at a time. And it is kind of time consuming, but I really love the look of it. So that's what I mean when I say that I'm going around it twice. So yeah, I just wanted to check in and give that little um, update. Alright, so it is the next day. It's been the next day for a while now and I finished up the front and the back. So this is how the front is looking. I love it. And I went ahead and added a second line of top stitching because I realized that um, I did a half inch hem on all of the curved pieces and the part where I did the hem, it wasn't really sticking down perfectly and it looked thicker in that area and it just looked weird without it being stitched down. So I did a second one and I actually kind of like the way it looks. I didn't do it on this one because again, I'm going to I'm gonna put the rivets on here. So it's kind of weird. It would look weird with the two lines of top stitching and then rivets. So this is the front of the medium blue and then this is the back of this one. And then I love the way the yellow pops on the dark blue like this so this is the front and then this is the back so now what i'm gonna go ahead and do is oops hold on 
So now what I'm about to go ahead and do is I need to put the rivets on the corner pieces. So I think it's a total of 13 rivets on each one for the fronts and backs on each side. So I want to say it was a, like a total of 52, I think it was like 52 um, rivets total for each bag. So I'm going to go ahead, map out the measurements for that, punch the holes, press that, and then I'll check back in once that's done. So let's do that. <laughs> Alright, so I went ahead and attached, did I attach, I didn't attach nothing. I went ahead and put the rivets on. So this is how it looks on the front. It looks really dope and I know it's going to look really cool when everything's together. And what really ties the riveting look on the bottom corners together with the whole bag is when I add the rivets on it and it has the two rivets on the handles because it looks a little bit more cohesive when it's rivets on the top and bottom portion. So this is the front. This is the back right here. And then this is the dark blue denim one as well. And both of these have the antique brass. I was originally gonna do um, regular brass on this one, but I didn't like how it looked. I thought the antique brass looked a lot better. So now that I have this done, the next thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is the handles and I already have them prepped. So I'm doing rolled handles, but I decided to round the ends a little bit i thought this would be a really cool touch and i've never done anything like this before um and i've been playing around with different shapes and just fun little things in my designs lately so i thought why not do rolled handles but round the corners and this is going to be a one inch rolled handle which is a lot bigger than i normally do so this is currently two inches but then when i fold it over it's going to be one inch um, so it's going to be bigger than what i'm normally used to working with in rolled handles so hopefully that turns out decent but I'm gonna go ahead, sew up the rolled handles, attach those on, and then I'll check back in once that's done. So, gonna do that. Alright, so it's the next day and yet last night it took me a really long time to do the rolled handles and attach them and everything and it, honestly it wasn't hard um, using the liquid stitch I found when using it through the whole throughout this whole process of making these bags is such a game changer it is like I can't believe that I have not been using that I've been using double-sided tape and that helps you know keep things in place you know where they're supposed to be but the liquid stitch just adds that mm. so when I use both of them together it's like it's over but this is how the front of them are looking so freaking dope so you know it has the overlaying with the rivets super cute double stitch and then the rolled handles and i love the little i love that i curved these i really love this look it was my first time doing something like this so the medium blue and then the dark blue and i also did the backs as well so now that i have these done i'm gonna go ahead and sew the fronts and backs together and just sew the bag the exterior finish that up so i'm gonna go ahead and sew the bags together hopefully it's not too hard the hardest part is going to be making sure all the overlaying pieces line up on the seams because you don't want them to be you know misproportionate and not line up when the bag is turned right side out so um i did a pretty good job on my last design for my last video the lover 2.0 at lining up the stuff so i'm gonna try the same method so i'm um, using staples and stuff like that so that's what i'm about to do and that's what you're gonna see so let's do that
All right, so I finished sewing the exteriors together and they're freaking huge, like legitimately. I don't know if on camera you can tell how big it is in real life, but this bag is, it's, it's a big bag, but I love it. That's what I designed it to be. So it's inside out right now. I can't turn it right side out yet because I have to work on the linings and you probably can't even see the inside of this one because it is dark, but the side seams line up amazingly. I did a really good job and I made sure I had to seam rip a few times and do a few things to get it lined up um, correctly, but ended up turning out this is the medium blue. You might be able to see this one a little bit better. No, you can't. Okay, so um, this is what it looks like inside out though right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the lining and I'm gonna show you the colors and everything that I'm going with for that. So let me go grab the pieces. So for the lining, the color that I'm doing for the medium blue one is going to be like this foresty green. This green looks so good with the medium blue and the yellow like it's not even funny and then i'm doing the purple with the dark blue which this also looks amazing with the dark blue and the yellow so i'm really excited both of the colors are giving different vibes and you know the co colors always give a vibe to me so the dark blue is like a little bit more of a cooler you know vibe the medium blue is more like softer but like still cool laid back you know all that type of stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and start on the lining um for this one for these linings i'm doing a divided slip pocket um, interior zipper pocket and then my interior logo so that's all that I'm doing I also have to add magnetic snaps on the top panel pieces because for the lining I'm adding a denim strip to the top of it just to make it look more cohesive with the outside I thought it would look weird from a harsh denim to waterproof canvas um, transition for the inside so for the top part it's gonna be a two inch denim um, panel piece along can I talk along the top and I'm gonna put a magnetic snap closure and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna start on the lining, sew that up. I actually have to wait a little bit for some items to come in the mail. I ordered, um, I might already have some. I ordered some yellow zipper with an antique brass coil and it's out for delivery right now. I probably have some, but the place where I ordered it from, which is Wawa, I love the quality of theirs. So I'm gonna wait till that comes before I do the zipper pockets, but I'm gonna do everything else. So I'm about to start on that and that's what you're gonna see. So let's do that. Okay, so it is the next day and the linings are done and complete. They look so amazing. It took me quite a while to get through these yesterday. I literally spent all day just working on the linings because one, again, I had to wait for some materials to come in the mail, which was really just a zipper tape and some double-sided tape. And for some reason, the day that I actually needed materials and was waiting on them, the freaking FedEx wants to come super late because they normally come earlier in the day, but they didn't come until like around five. So had to wait, but it came out really dope. So this is how the inside of the dark purple one looks. Has a zipper pocket. It's a yellow zipper tape with an antique brass coil. Has my interior logo. When you open it up, it has my tag. that says made by Ravel Gaither. I love to put those on the inside. And then I have the divided slip pocket on this side as well. And I actually lined this one. Normally I don't line um, the, my slip pockets when I do them because it's waterproof canvas and you know, it doesn't really fray. So I normally don't, but I like how it feels lined because it gives it like a little bit of a thickness to the pocket. So I lined it on these ones and this looks cleaner on the inside. 
And then this is the green one. Uh, same thing, yellow zipper tape, antique brass coil, interior logo, and then the divided slip pocket. Um, and then it also has the denim panel pieces on the top that I was talking about. So now what I need to do is go ahead, as you can see, the actual bags are back there, but I need to go ahead and attach the lining to the exterior. So that's what I'm about to do. And I don't think it's gonna be too difficult because the way that I interface these bags, it's not super thick at the top. So um, I'm gonna do that and then I'll check back in once everything's done. I'm probably gonna finish all of it, honestly, um, cause I have to sew the lining and then top stitch it and then it's gonna be done. So the next clip might be me like just talking about the final product. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and that's what you're gonna see. So let's do that. All right, so it has been a couple of days later and everything has come out so amazing. I've sat with these bags for I wanna say like three, four, maybe five, like about three, four days now at this point. I already loved them when I first finished them, but the more that I sit with them, the more they grow on me. And this just also goes back to, like I said in my last video, making the things that I actually want to make and I'm drawn to because I have a different type of love for the finished product and just the whole process and production in general. So these bags came out freaking amazing the dark blue the yellow contrast stitching on this bag is so dope and i'm really glad that i decided to go ahead and do two layers of stitching if that is that even how you describe it two top stitches or whatever to give it a really bold contrasting stitch look and it looks really amazing i love the corner protectors and the rivets on there and the back of it also looks amazing and then the rolled handles with the curve and the medium blue it's a different ounce so it has a different stiffness to it like it's a two ounce difference um, the dark blue was a 12 ounce and the medium blue is a 14 ounce so it's a little bit stiffer but it still has a really nice love and feel to it the quality on these just is amazing i love it so much i didn't get to really show the insides because it was kind of hard to film the shots but the inside came out dope. I'm not taking out all of this stuffing paper because it is a lot because these bags are freaking huge. But as you can see, it has the yellow zipper um, back there with the coil and then my interior logo. And then this side has the divided slip pocket on here. So slip pocket and then slip pocket. And these bags are again, freaking huge. Like you can fit so much stuff in these bags. It's not even funny. Like I really hope you can tell on camera how big these are. Like it's freaking huge. You can fit so much stuff in here. And that's exactly what I designed it for. I originally wanted it to be really big. I almost could have made these bigger because in my head, I imagined them just a little bit bigger, but it's really nice. So this is how the dark blue one looks on. And then this is how the medium blue one looks on. I freaking love this color. Oh my gosh. I'm, oh, I love the stuff that I'm making so much. Like this is so freaking dope. So you can wear it on the shoulder like this. Of course you can put it on your arm like this or you can just hold it by the handles. And I love how thick the handles are. It makes it really easy and comfortable to hold and also to have on your shoulders as well. But yeah, both of the bags are done, they're complete. I love them and they're gonna be retailing for different prices. So the medium blue is gonna be retailing for $745 with the shipping and dust bag included in the cost. And then the dark blue is going to be retailing for $725 with the shipping and dust bag included. And the reason why this one costs less is because again, this denim was sent to me for free by Joann's and I didn't have to pay to use denim. So I didn't include that cost in the price of this one. So it's $20 cheaper because it's $20 by the yard and I use about a yard for these bags. So I didn't include that price in this one. So it's just $20 cheaper. Um, and yeah, those are gonna be dropping on my website this Friday which is September 22nd. It is currently September 18th. So I have a few more days. It's only Monday, so I have four more days. Everything's really ready to go for this drop. I'm really ahead of the curve for this one. All I have left to do really is make duster bags. 
and I really love this project. I would rate it a good six and a half out of 10. It wasn't crazy difficult at all, honestly. Um, it was a little time consuming due to me having to go over all of the stitches twice, but other than that, it really wasn't crazy difficult. So six and a half out of 10 is what I would give this project. And yeah, I'm so happy with how these came out. But yes, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you can be notified when I do upload new videos for future projects and things like that. If you are interested in purchasing these bags, know the link is down below in my description box for my website. You can go click that to shop. Um, these bags may be available depending on when you're watching this video. If you're watching it years or a long time after I upload this, they're probably going to be gone. But yeah, I'm really excited how these came out and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Deuces.